for the duration of the run. He's gonna. F he has a full cosplay. My boy Psych. He I've seen him in that in person twice now, and on stream yeah. countless times. You guys want to see him so, cosplay the most perfect princess ever? Yeah, it's currently ten dollars out of fifty. Oh, we and can the get run that. Is tomorrow. All I have to do um, is just die twice. Yeah. Um, Metadog is going. To, one of the incentives is Metadog is he he's going to dye his beard gold alongside his already silver hair for the rest of the event. That's currently seventy-two dollars out of a hundred. Well, well, then ends well. We also yeah. have the God hey, Jump uh, for DuckTales Remastered, which is only ten dollars. Uh, <laughs> don't donations towards that yet. No, well, now I'm interested. Uh, and, this here is and now for some of the bid wars we have, we have the, the um, Mario Kart Eight Deluxe character choice, which are people. either Shy Guy or Stop. Waluigi. Incredible. Uh, we have the waves. Right? Wave Race 64. You, uh, you can choose Dave's color either out of, out of brown or green. Scholars to do the research. Um, you can choose which character will be chosen in the Hat of Time, uh, either Bow Kid or Hat Kid. Commission. And the last bid war we have right now is for Super Metroid to save or kill the animals. And that one will be applied to all Super Metroid runs. And we will be just taking the current status of the donation for that particular run until the last run. I will say so, this. Nate, to see... oh, I will say this. Hat Kid is superior to Bow Kid. If anyone is going to donate towards that, okay. make sure you pick Hat Kid. Just saying. So for save, for save and kill the animals. Kill the animals is currently in the lead with one hundred and one dollars and sixty six cents. To save animals, sixty six dollars. Nice. So if you want to save the animals, you need to get at least thirty five dollars and sixty seven cents. I say kill him. Save the frames. Next is the smithy. It's this way. Um, so we're in another auto scroller, waiting for Matt Mercer, like usual. Uh, he's got to wait for him to catch up. He's got this like little radius around him that forces us to walk. So we, we went out of it to get in front of him, uh, and now we're in front of him as far as we can possibly be. There's a little invisible barrier there that waits waits for Mercer, the the field team leader, who is voiced by Matt Mercer, which I found out like three months ago. Um, but we got to wait for him. So we are as far as possible in front of him right now. Uh, it's just the quickest way to get up here because there's a cutscene trigger right next to this box. Um, just little stuff to make this movement a little bit faster. Saves us time overall. We'll be coming here to the smithy like three times this run. Uh, once after Castadon. Um, excuse me, once before Castadon. Uh, and then again after Puke. So we go over here so we can start running. We gotta get it out of his radius, and this saves like 15 seconds. Just run all the way past him. This was something I didn't know about for like four months when I started running this game. Um, but we are coming up here to try to find our cat. Um, we can't find him. Until he's here. I love this animation so much. This whole cutscene is just blessed. Perfect lad. Um, so a lot of this run is like inventory management, gathering management, and uh, it's the last word I'm looking for. Uh, materials management, because we need to use, we need to gather certain materials to make certain upgrades. We need to have certain items to make sure we can make traps and tranks and other things that are gonna help us throughout the run. Uh, so all of my routing for each quest is built in a way that I have the resources that I need at those times. The only one that isn't is the uh, first large monster hunt, which is Great Jagras. Uh, during that one, we actually can't capture him with a, a melee weapon um, because the materials just aren't around. It'd be like a huge time loss to go out of our way to get the materials. So we just we don't capture him with a melee weapon. We just kill him instead. Um, which brings me to the next thing I wanted to talk about are the weapons. There are 14 weapons in this game. Uh, each weapon is technically categoried uh, by themselves. There's a there are 14 categories for each for each weapon, and then there's a 15th, which is multi-weapon, which is what we'll be doing. Uh, it's anytime you would use more than one weapon type. 
So I'm going to start out with a weapon called Charge Blade. It's a sword and a shield that turns into a gigantic axe. It's the second coolest weapon in the entire game, at least in my opinion. Uh, it's probably one of the best too, especially speedrun. Uh, so we're going to start with that. There we go. So we did what it. would be the what would be the best overall weapon? So for the single going. for the individual categories. Um when you say individual categories, you mean like the uh, the the any, like types. yeah. Well, so that's the thing too. It's kind of weird because like for RTA for the for the any percent categories, we can only do so many things, which is either you know iron or or bone trees. For the most part, uh, you go bone tree because it has a higher raw damage, um, especially in the early game because sharpness doesn't matter. When you get into late game, sharpness matters, and then we got to change our our strategy again. Um, what I just did there was eating a meal. It gives you temporary buffs for the duration of your quest. We'll always eat the meat meal, which gives us an attack boost, um, a stamina boost, and sometimes a health boost. Um, but for us, we just use the charge blade here because of its reach. Um, there's like three or four different strategies for doing this quest. Um, all of them are about the same speed. This is the one that I'm the most comfortable with. Um... The most common strat is what we call um, uh, fire pod strats or fire slinger strats, where we essentially make a line of fire on the ground and the monsters kill themselves on it. And that completes the quest for us. Um, it just takes a hot second to do because you got to wait for the monsters to kill themselves, but you can start gathering while they do that. Um, the other one is to use Lance. Uh, it's probably one of the more consistent ones because Lance has got like huge reach, good poke, all that stuff. Uh, but I like using Charge Blade. I don't think I've ever seen anyone else use Charge Blade to do this, um, but I like to do it because uh, it has really good reach and it kills everything kind of fast, like we'll see right now. See if I can get this first with one swing. Good so far. All right, so we missed one over here, and there we go. So you can get that in one full combo which is fast, but this doesn't really lose us any time. We have to wait here anyways for one more of these Jagras to jump down, that guy. In which case, we can do this, and then do the exact same thing. And one more spin. Here we go. And then now we got to get out of here, because we need to do a bunch of gathering. Um, so when we come out of this quest, we need at least one Ancient Bone which is a rare drop out of these bone piles. It's a green thing. See if we get it early. We'll need small monster bones, just not a lot of them. Uh, but we need at least one ancient bone, which we can get from each of the gathers off of these bone piles, or we can get from the quest itself. Um, the cat can pick one up too. It's just really not likely. Uh, I'm going to grab a couple more things here. A flash pod, uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's essentially a flashbang, but for monsters. Sliding where we can, speeds up things, and this is our next bone pile. This is the last one of this level. I just want one green ancient bone. And we get marathon RNG. Yay! Uh, which is to say bad RNG. Yay! Uh, so let's hope either A, the cat picked one up. Oh, I almost made that. Uh, I usually don't make that. I make it probably one ten times to get that last flash bug, but say lovey. Looking for a green thing. We got one. We're good for right now. We have an opportunity to get one more before we actually need it. Uh, but this is pretty much run safe. Usually, if I don't get it, I'll reset. Uh, but since we got one, we can keep going. We just need one right now to uh, to make our first bits of, uh, of, of armor. Um, so this is the first upgrade that we do. Yeah, what were you going to say? So in a marathon setting, let's say you were not to get that green bone. Mm -hmm. Do you have do you have any backups for that? Nope. <laughs> uh, there really aren't any backups to this game because uh, it's all just dependent on RNG. Uh, if we don't get it, we just kind of deal with it. You can still do the speed run. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer. Um, you'll notice that I said the uh, that we're trying to shoot for a 129. I've been pretty consistent with a 129. Um, okay. but that's six minutes faster than the estimate that I gave. Um, yeah. that's because, oh, this new menu, they updated the game last night. It added two new menus to the game. Um, but yeah, you'll notice it's six minutes, 
uh, ahead of that. I mean, that's just because of the nature of this game. Um, because if we miss RNG, then things go a little bit slower. Uh, that's yeah. the first weapon upgrade that we do. We're going to do one more, and it's after Puke Puke, which is in three hunts. Really only two hunts. Um, if we don't get the RNG on Puke Puke, it kind of sucks. Because uh, we just don't have the right sharpness to do everything efficiently. So I have to get creative on how I fight things. Which is usually aerial spamming. Uh, just eating here again. What's really annoying about the canteen about eating is that uh, there is a chance that you have enough like enough ingredients that they are called prime ingredients. Uh, when you have at least two of them, you get the choice platter, which becomes the first the, the second option. Um, the second option is usually. Um, Sorry, I had to think about what I was doing. Uh, there we are. The second option is usually the meat. Uh, but when we get the choice platter, I have to pay attention to what is actually like on that list so I can do a down input to the right thing. Uh, so we got to kill three of these guys right here. Well, one guy. Oh, I missed the weak spot on it. Oh, well. Uh, but we got to kill three of them, then we're going to go down here and kill uh, four more. Uh, just making sure that we don't get hit by this guy. He's being ornery. All right. Let's look for another group. We will need this red pit, which is a type of slinger animo, uh, for our super secret tool later. Hopefully the game cooperates. It probably won't. Um, and we get to do some big damage for free. Uh, but this is an aerial attack, what we're about to do here. Uh, with hammer, you can charge down a slope and slide. Looks really cool. Uh, and then we go into this cool aerial attack. Uh, I don't like that. Oh, okay, good. We still got two. Uh, I'm going to try to group these guys up the best I can. But I can hit them both at the same time. Killing things at multiple times, obviously, faster, especially for these guys. And oh no, swayed a little too far away. Good. And then we just got to sharpen right here to make sure we have enough for uh the next fight. Think I found something. Uh, but Kestodon are like really weird. They can either go really well or really poorly because they like to move around. You can bounce off their head for no reason because they have hard heads. Um, but this is the the first real hunt uh, of the game, uh, and I have a near perfect script on it, and I'm really hoping I get it right. Um, you may hear me use that word often, a script. Uh, it's what I want to do, uh, but like in most plays, not everything goes well. Uh, so sometimes you have to go off script uh, because something goes awry. Uh, but it's essentially just the way I want to fight the monster. I'm trying to do the sequence of things in a very specific order to control and manipulate the monster uh, the best I can, to the best of the game that will let me do it. Um, how monsters move and react uh and 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 act is reactionary it's really based on you your presence and the presence of your palico your cat uh those factors all together will change how they move i'm grabbing some stuff here uh to craft tranquilizers which will be needed to capture monsters um which i'm going to talk about on the next hunt when we do our first capture these are for bombs, because bombs are fun, and bombs are fast. Um, but we'll see if this happens right every now and then. So what I'm going to try to do here, I mean, what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to shoot the, the red pit, the little red seed that I get, at these rocks. Sometimes the game eats it, and it just doesn't happen. Uh, but luckily that time, it did. Oh, I'm a little too far away. I get a little bit closer. There we go. Uh, but all I'm trying to do here is do a full charge into two what's called triangle combos. I want uh, hits on the head to build up stun. Miss that attack. That'll KO him right there. And then this is the circle combo, which is called the... Wow, I can't remember. It just left my mind. Oh, I hit the arm there. Uh, it's actually fine. Got that break. That's good. 
I'm going I'm trying to get a second KO now. Oh, I missed the KO. Cool. Um so these red pits drop or these these red things drop at specific health. That's a piercing pot. Powerful type of slinger Hello? That missed. There we go. That's better. So he's gonna die right here. Watch out of that. And now we can continue. Um, but what I was trying to do there was get two KOs. A KO, a, a part break so he trips, and then a KO again. Uh, getting two and a half... Uh, oh, Big Bang combo. That's the circle one. Getting two and a half of those off kills him. Um, so these sleep herbs combined with those uh, parachutes that we gathered earlier, those make the tranquilizers. This net's going to make a pitfall trap later. There's just so much gathering. I, I gather specific things so I have no extra and no access. Um, so it, it gets pretty tight. And the last thing I'm going to do here is just set up what's called a radial menu. And I'm going to be quiet for it. Oops. Uh-oh. Where am I? Nailed it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I set up a bunch of things on there from what's called the crafting list. Uh, your radial menu is kind of like your quick menu. You can pull it up while you're in the middle of a fight and use things from it. Like you can use items, you can do shout outs, you can craft things. Um, it's probably one of the best additions to a Monster Hunter game. Um... But I did it all for crafting stuff because I want to be able to craft things without uh, opening the crafting menu. So I'm going to do it all from that radial menu instead. And then it'll add it to my item bar uh, automatically. I just cycle over it. Just got to pay attention to where things are so I use them correctly. Let's check it out. Uh, but I was talking about... See, there's a lot to talk about in this game. And I like talking. <laughs> you couldn't tell. Um, but I was talking about the... Uh, what are called powerful slingers. It was the red things that he dropped. I picked up one of them to shoot him um, while he was escaping. Hey. Staggering him like that, reset his AI, he came back. It's just fighting stuff like that. That's that's how we have to do this game. Uh, but it's manipulating his, his AI. That's just one very small AI manipulation that we do. Just a game mechanic, really, at that point. Um, but they drop at certain healths. All the, lar uh, all the large monsters will drop them when they reach their health reaches a certain threshold. Um, what this this actually tells me like how hurt the monster is. Look over there. Um, you can capture a monster when they are under thirty percent health. For most monsters, that's when they drop the second pod. Uh, they drop the second one actually about twenty seven percent. Um, which is like super handy information because the only other way to tell is that the monster will limp away like that Jagras just did. Um, so it's super handy to to know. Uh, that they, you know, the second pod is usually 30%. That's true for nearly every monster, uh, except for, like, three of them. Um, I got the second Ancient Bone I needed off of that fight, so... Yay, RNG actually did the appropriate thing. We got the two things that we need for this run. Uh -huh. Everything else is just extra that we probably won't get. Um, but we needed that Ancient Bone for the second weapon upgrade. Uh, so these trap tools, these bombs, and these barrel bombs, well, you know, they do what they do. They make traps, they make bombs, they blow up. Uh, we're going to use those throughout the run. And uh, you'll see how it speeds things up. Just talking to this person because they're a cutscene trigger, and then immediately opening the map to get a text uh, skip. Um, those two try to happen at the same time. One's longer than the other, so if you can do it fast enough, the second one that happens is shorter than the first. It makes waiting here faster. And then we can depart on what's called an expedition, which is a new addition to this game, which is just going out and hunting stuff for your heart's desire and not worrying about dying or carting or really anything. No time limits, nothing. Get that nearly frame perfect dodge there to get right up to this it saves like a half a second really probably doesn't even save any time uh and then we're gonna start running towards the campsite uh this hunt is a monster called kulia ku or as i had to call him pottery bird i have little nicknames for all of them great joggers is reggae lizard for obvious reasons he has dreadlocks um but we're just running in a very specific path we need to go and find a camp 
Uh, once we get to that camp, cutscene trigger, the next hunt, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This game is very predictable. Um, nobody plays Monster Hunter for the story. We play Monster Hunter for that. A T-Rex. That's Anchenef. We've met him before. He's not nice. He will ruin the run at some point. He can ruin the run at a many a time, and we don't like that. Uh, ate a ration there to reset my stamina. It's actually a cool little trick that you can do. Um, so you can keep running. And then I ate a bug called the Wiggly Lychee. It halves your stamina consumption. So there's, like, things around in the world that you get to use. Make your life a lot easier. That's why I really like this game. Because I've been playing it since, uh, 3U on the 3DS and Wii U. Um... There's a little bit of RNG right here. It's a 50-50 chance for the handler uh, to speak before Matt Mercer here. Uh, if she does, we lose a couple seconds. If she doesn't, um, we actually get a really good setup for Kaliaku. Which is this guy, Pottery Burb. He's just out here trying to go into the swap and meet and, you know, get a new pot for his orchids or something. And he broke it. That was a good find too. Tisk tisk tisk. Um, but if Handler doesn't talk here, then we, you know, don't lose time for free. You can Dang it, Handler! <laughs> for your scout flies on the map. We don't like it when she talks. Well, if we don't take care of that pest, the camp won't last the night. Oh yeah. That monster's called Kuliaku. Sure is, isn't it? This is the scout fly tutorial. We don't need that because we know where the monsters are. Um, but we're gonna jump down here and we're gonna climb this tree branch here. Uh, on the top of it are what are called Thunderbugs. Uh, Thunderbug with a uh, trap tool makes a shock trap. And we're going to manage those throughout the run to make sure that we have uh, traps to capture the re every every monster from here on out. So we're going to shoot that to stun him. And KO. Dodge forward. And go into the circle combo. Essentially, we do the first combo, the triangle combo, to get a stun. It has a higher stun damaging threshold. Then we do the circle combo because it has a higher damaging threshold. I did not want that stagger. Because then he does that. He's not supposed to do that, but because I got that stagger when I didn't mean to. Oh, I missed his head. I just need to get another... KO here. Mm. Alright, I'm gonna have to flash him. I tried not to do this. But sometimes you just have to. When you flash him, he just stands still. And then he does that. Big Bang combo was very generous. Because my hammer was not on him. This is when I would start lurking for the lurking, looking for the first pod to drop. Which it still hasn't for some reason. There it is. Okay. That was just rude. And we're going to go for the trap now. See if I did this too early. Nope, I didn't. And that one we just got to return from quest. So you'll notice that he only dropped one pod then. Um, but that he was still under 30%. Uh, he was probably somewhere around 29 or 28. Uh, right before the second pod drop. Um, I play this game a lot. Knowing your hits, counting your hits, really saves time. Magnifique. Don't let me down. Uh, so we're going to craft a shock trap here so we can buy two trap oh, tools. The game limits your inventory. You can only have two trap tools in your inventory at a time, and we need a bunch of those. So I try to keep as many with me as possible. We're the ones to get it done. Um, a lot of the Astera movement is just chaining together, like, shopping, uh, and triggering the next sequence. It's like, we have to go talk to the commander, but we start right next to the shop, so we're gonna go shopping, kind of stuff. Um, it's really neat, because, like, the game's kind of designed in a way where it really caters to that. Like, everything, it, it was very convenient how everything lines up. Uh, like, for instance... We're going to go to the smithy after cool, uh, after we fight this Puke Puke. Puke Puke is the first quest that you can initiate from a quest board. And the quest board is adjacent to the smithy. It's just really convenient. Um, and I, I, that makes it nice. Alright, so I know I said the run kind of started at Great Jogger. So this is really where it starts. 
Um, this is where we know if we're going to have a good run or not, where, like, big time losses really matter. I'm grabbing these again because they are here. Then we're going to drop this, which is called a scatter nut. Um, we're going to do something that's called quick mounts. I'm going to grab this scatter nut because it'll stun a monster. And we're going to sit right next to this thing that's a poison cup because we want to poison this guy. Uh-oh, never mind. I want to get away from him. All right, now come here. I want to go forward. Nope. Okay. We still got poisoned. Cat's going to heal me. And I'm going to go for the mountain now. Actually, no, I'm not. And I'm happy I didn't because if I would have gone for the mount, it would have KO'd him. Uh, we want to chain things like so we don't waste them. So like getting a mount, getting a KO off of a mount would really suck. There are iframes in this game. I just abused one to dodge a roar. I'm actually going to go for it. Ah, I missed. So I was trying to get a mount off on him there, uh, but I missed it. You can essentially ride the monsters, uh, but doing this flash pod is just as good, if not better, because we're going to chain those two things together uh, to extend the amount of time that the monster is staying still. Notice he's just standing here. And then we just get another KO for free. Uh, we ignore poison. And then I'm just waiting for the first pod to drop, which should be soon. I don't know why she turned around like that. Now, there is something to heal me, like, right over here. So I am paying attention to, like, where I am in case I want to get that. Um, dropped it yet. Don't want that hunt or that mount. Stick close to him. You can't hit you with that. Another iframe abuse. Uh, but like a lot of the times, these hunts are are just ad lib. I'm just trying to find openings to do things. But I really want to be landing hits on weak spots. And I want this last pod, and if I don't get it, which I didn't, I'm going to go for a safe thing, uh, which is pre-tranking. We tranquilize the monster first, and then we capture him. What that does is it extends the time in the trap. If they aren't a low enough th uh, health threshold, we can still damage them inside the trap um, and make sure we actually capture them. Because at this point, if I miss the capture, uh, I have to uh, kill it. Uh, dumping things out of our inventory there because the next uh, the next hunt is an auto scroller. Um, we're going to use that time to do a lot of gathering. Uh, the next hunt is a really good time if you want to uh, plug anything. Oh, okay, no, we got it. Uh, yep, two medium bones. So I was just checking. I usually don't check that, um, but I just wanted to see if we actually got the upgrade, and we did. We need at least two medium monster bones with that one ancient bone that we picked up, uh, and that gives us our third upgrade, which will tell me right here, too. I like to double check them sometimes, especially in a marathon setting, because I don't want to waste time. Uh, but we go up here, and like I said, the routing's really convenient. You know, there's a quest board right next to the smithy. I want to go to the smithy anyways. It's really convenient. Uh, I'm going to check this. I did get them. Nice. Uh, these are not guaranteed and i didn't set the bump on the wish list so that was kind of a, a risky time loss um the we just upgraded into the blown bud, uh, bludgeon three not the best weapon that we can get the best one that we can get at this point is actually the coolia coup hammer um which we didn't get but if we did i would have made that instead of what i did make yeah <laughs> um But yeah, so we, we just kind of like have to work with RNG and go for what's more consistent versus what's the best. Because you'll notice we aren't farming anything. We aren't, it's not like we're going to go and we're going to hunt uh, Kuliaku four times to get all those materials and then finish the run. No, we just finish the run with what we have. It's the fastest way to do it. Um, 
This is the best kind of quest, which is literally the worst kind of speedrun quest. Um, it's an auto-scroller. Uh, so a lot of this is just running around, picking up stuff to make just the normal things that we're going to need. Uh, what's really neat is that between this and the longer speedrun categories, so between history books and colossal tasks, the routing changes. Um, because we need to gather things that are uh, going to help us in the longer category from here. Like, we, we would go for more uh, upgrade materials, which we aren't going to go for any more upgrade materials now, because we have everything we need to, to finish the run. Um, but we're going to gather all these fire herbs and this thing, which is called a Might Seed. Um, if you know anything about RPGs, red things make you stronger. <laughs> um, and Might Seeds are, are no exception. They, um, they craft into items that give us temporary or even uh, permanent... Um, stat boosts, uh, specifically to attack. Uh, the more damage you deal, the faster we go, the quicker we hunt, hey, stuff like that. Um, so we make what are what we call power items. Um, we make uh, demon drugs, uh, which last the entire duration of the hunt or until we cart, and demon powders, which last, I think it's 90 seconds. Um, they don't last long, but it's a it's a good amount. I forgot that we got a, a lucky spot earlier. Um, so it's just this is all just scripted movement. We don't actually it's an escort mission. We're supposed to be like with this uh, with the caravan, but they're pretty capable. You know we trust the handler not to mess it up too much. Um, so we just kind of let them do their own thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna gather all this stuff. But there are there are two cutscene triggers that we need to be in range of uh, to, to make sure we progress at the right times, and we're coming up to one now. Um, so everything's just kind of like routed out in a way that we know we can make these cycles. Um, just gathering more things to make more stuff later. And you'll see like as I go, I'm going to be using the radial menu to make things in bulk. And I just do it like at times that I know I, I don't have to be putting in inputs for other things, which I could also just be doing up here, because I have to stand here and wait for a hot second. And we're going to stand here and wait. And look at that thing. That's the wild Alrighty, spire. Well, well I'm going to take this time to um, talk about our sponsor for this event. Please do. So, so Lager Gaming is a Nashville-based esports organization that currently competes in the FGC, the ROE, and the R6 scenes. They also host LAN events in around Nashville for plenty of titles that include Call of Duty, Fortnite, and a ton of fighting games. You can follow them on their social media on Twitter and Twitch, both under Lager Gaming, L-A-G-R Gaming. And I suggest giving them a follow because they've been a huge help with uh, a lot of things for this event. Hey, Jia. Uh, so we just made our first pitfall trap. They work like uh, shock traps, so they stop the monster, but instead of the monster's full body being exposed on the top, it actually drops their lower half into the ground and it gives us a really good position on the head. Um, what I'm going to do here is wait for a cutscene trigger and look at the map at the same time. You can't select anything if the map is loading sections. Uh, so we preload it there, um, get the cutscene trigger, walk forward to get the second cutscene trigger. There's two right here. Uh, but there's one trigger for the roar, and then one trigger for her to show up. Um, this part of the game, they're trying to teach you, like, stealth. That you can kind of distract the monsters by being out of sight from them and shooting a pod to, like, control their movement. You can shoot something to hit the ground, and they'll go towards it. It's actually really neat. Um, like, a super handy thing um, if you aren't comfortable just going full unga against something. Um, but we completely ignore it. I'm going to get my neck snapped here. Yup. Scout flies are mean. They like to break your neck. At least they try to. Uh, and then we're just kind of revisiting the same areas that we were at because, um, go, go, more go. is always better kind of thing. Life. Uh, we want to have as much as we can possibly have, which is just four of everything until the end of the run. Um, which we're just kind of like pre-gathering right now. Um, by the end of the next quest, whoop, uh, we'll have uh, four demon drugs and four demon powders, which will be enough to finish out the run to get a power boost on each of those. 
They actually, they, they really help, especially with like staggers and breaks and stuff. Um, but as far as like speeding it up, it's actually like minute. You know, you only get a few seconds out of them and not like minutes. At higher levels of play, they scale differently. Um, we get like really big time saves by using power items because we can also use more of them. Some of them stack on top of each other and some of them don't. Um, but the demon powder and the demon drug do stack. So we craft both and we get both bonuses. Um, so I drop these scatter nuts uh, to do a quick uh, to do a quick mount on Baroth. I 90% of the time do it if I'm set up well for it. If I'm not, I ignore it. Uh, but having the scatter nut is good because we can stagger him to stop his movement from him leaving. Because um, Baroth is one of those that doesn't like to drop pods. Sometimes um, the pods aren't always guaranteed. You can actually have them not drop if you have either too low of sharpness or you don't hit a weak spot. Um, there are certain spots on the monster that deal more damage than others uh, when hit with certain weapons. For Hammer, that's almost always the head. Uh, but for Baroth, that's not true. Baroth is annoying. He's got these little itty-bitty hands that he's really self-conscious about, so we're going to beat the crap out of him. Um, that's right. His little itty-bitty hands are his weak spot, and they are not easy to hit. Um... So we put down a trap so we can hit them easier. Um, I hope everyone knows how to count to seven, because I'm going to need to help with that. Because we have to count to seven here in a second. Um, the demon drug lasts the entire time until we cart. The demon powder has a duration on it. So we don't want to use it too early and not have enough of it for the hunt. So we use it seven seconds after this quote. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see what kind of to immediately use it, it, we use it right before a cutscene starts. When you're in a cutscene, your buffs don't uh, drain. They don't, the timer on them stops completely. Um, so we have, I think it's like, it's either 90 or 120 seconds with, uh, with the demon powder. We started that timer right before the cutscene, then the cutscene started, so the timer stops. Easy. Um, it's just a very small thing that we do to try to maximize the things that we have. Because we don't get a lot of resources during this run, and the longer uh, categories, you get even less. <laughs> I've been, like, trying to theorycraft new routes to make sure that we have uh, Might Seeds for the entire duration of the game. Not gonna happen. Literally not gonna happen. Um, it's a very tight routing, but we can get them for the majority of the quests. Um, or if you do it, you're just giving up time for free. We'd rather not do that. We want to go fast. Um, beginning of this is really funny. Because uh, we put down a trap. And he's just going to land, like, right into it. Um, and it's always really funny the way that this quest starts. Because it's like, wait a second, where did my trap go? Honey? <laughs> he just falls right into it. Uh, so we shoot that pod to blow up the bombs, and then we go. So you see how the numbers are orange? We want orange numbers, because orange numbers means we're hitting weak spots. Just another iframe dodge. Those are nearly frame perfect. And then since he did a certain attack, I go for a mount here. This is a mount. You need two staggers in a mount to get a drop, and that's not always guaranteed. It's dependent on the monster's movement. Uh, you could also do it in one stagger, like we just did. And we use the scatter nut to get those staggers quickly. If we don't have scatter nut, we have to stab him in the back, and that takes a long time. Uh, but now I just want to hit these hands. He's going to turn, do a bite, and then we're going to do it again. So really, that attack... Ooh, that was actually okay. Getting roared out of the air is faster than getting roared on the ground. That attack, we actually want to hit uh, the very last hit on a weak spot. Um, it has the most damage. This game works off of a concept called movement values. He's gonna do that. All right, so we have one pod. We're looking for the second one. Oh, that's free. All right, sure, I'll take that. 
um, him going choo-choo, which is, that's what I call it, right into a spire uh, is a free KO. And then there's the second pod. And now he's gonna try to leave. But we're gonna stagger him to stop him. And then we're gonna put this down. Oh, I'm happy we didn't put it down because he tried to leave. And now we're gonna put it down. And one. And two. And we're done. That's actually a really good bear off. It's much better. I did a practice run before this. Uh, that bear off uh, didn't go so well. Um, this is a quest you can very easily die to. There's a Diablos. If you know anything about the game, Diablos is scary. Um, it's called Diablos for a reason. And I got it. Yes. Getting those Thunderbugs isn't easy because <laughs> they're really far apart. And you only have 10 seconds. No, but he's called Diablos for a reason because he's big, scary, and will kill me in one shot. Um, so I'm happy that I didn't accidentally spawn him. It's really easy to do so, and the Baroth can do it too. This is a long cutscene. Um, that's like the third longest in the game, but the longest for this category. Uh, probably the second longest for this category. Because the last one is pretty long. Um, but we're about we're about halfway through. Give me a little past that. I, I don't actually have the the timer up. It should be about fifty minutes right now. Um, but I don't have the timer up for a specific reason because I don't want to psych myself out. <laughs> we're just gonna do it and see how well we do. I too am a hunter of the first I call this guy Monster Hunter Johnny Depp. I don't know why. I just do. To share your tale with me. Um, so the last, so we have three large monster hunts left and then Zora Magdaros. Um, if you don't know anything about the game, uh, they always try to like put in this kind of like siege monster. It's a, you know, you, you fight, he's, it's like bigger than life kind of thing and you fight on it, in it or around it. Uh, Zora Magdaros is this game's version of that. Um, there are three hunts before that, Jeratotus, Toby Kadachi, and Anjanath. Uh, Jiratotus is annoying because he fights in water, and we can't put traps down in water, so we have to be kind of careful how we fight him. We have to pull him to specific areas so we can put traps down to capture him. We have to get a certain script on him, and, and not even a script. We have to just fight him well. And he's annoying because he drops his second pod at, like, 54% or something like that. Um... His third pod drops at 32% or 33%, somewhere around there. And then his fourth pod, he has four whole pods. Most monsters only have three. He has four, uh, drops at 12. So we want to get him somewhere between the, the third and fourth. So when I see the third pod, I, I, I know the number of hits it takes to damage him enough so he's under 30% so I can capture him. Um... Which just makes this monster the most annoying. Um, he can cart us. He can kill us. It's it's definitely possible. It's not likely, though. The only annoying thing about him is just trying to capture him. Alright, and moving on. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully Jeratotus goes well. I have, like, a 30-second time save on him in my, in my PB. Okay. Like, I, I have the ability to save 30 seconds just because of how wildly inconsistent that split is. So, more shopping. This one's kind of out of the way. Uh, but we do it. Just to get more bombs, or more stuff to make bombs, and more traps. And I, I do that because it's kind of a backup in case I miss uh, the trap on him. I have extras. I have at least two extra to uh, to still capture him. It's it's very easy just to, to miss the traps on him, and it sucks. Um, so there's these spikes that we're supposed to be investigating, uh, between here and where the monster is. But those spikes have these, like, little cutscenes that go along with them. They stop you, they move the camera, they slow you down, they make you walk. We're not about that life. So we're just gonna fly to here and ignore every single one of them. It's actually, uh, really funny. Because we just aren't, we aren't gonna look at, we're gonna see one set, uh, and they don't even have a, like, a little trigger associated with them. Uh, we need this bitter bug, the little blue bug in the wall here. So we're gonna link that round this corner, and our cutscene triggers right up here. Um, 
We're gonna try to use this demon powder Is that the right before it. What's that he's sitting next to? Point ourselves up like and wedge beetle. Just trying to save as much time between us using it and um and the cutscene. This is my favorite NPC in the entire game. I love him. Mostly because he's just a nervous wreck, and I love that. <laughs> and I'm doing everything in my power not to recite every line in this game. <laughs> it's usually what I do during the cutscenes because I get so bored. Uh, that's the only unfortunate thing about this game. There's a lot of cutscenes to it. We timed it out. There's about 18 minutes of cutscene just in this category. Um, so if Capcom, if you're watching, uh, please put in a skip cutscenes. Take take note from like, I don't know, Octopath Traveler. Hold X to skip, please. Um, that'd be blessed. All right. So this is Juratotus. I might get like a little quiet here. It's really annoying to fight him. You have to hit the top of his head. It's not an easy thing to hit. New target. New target. Hunt that Juratotus. There's a little slope right there. With Try not to go directly into that mud. I want him to turn. He did. I missed. Oh, I kind of got it. There we go. You want to dodge out of that and then go in for a big bang. Uh, I think I'm going to miss the last hit of this. But it's okay. So that's the first pod. Ugh. All right. The mud is the worst thing. You can get out of it quicker than that. Um, I'm Now I'm concentrating because I actually got really lucky with that. a really good hit there's the second pod and now we're just looking for the third which takes a little while he has a very thick tail getting that iframe dodge is not easy and then just getting hit like that feels bad but hitting Bernie, his I'm head oh i'm sorry oh nope, I'm go ahead real quick. we have a 20 dollar donation from nova kid uh saying no comment no comment Okay, I got hit there. That's unfortunate. So thank you, Nova Kitten, for the donation. Ooh. That was just a small stagger that knocked him out of the water there. Just really nice. Oh, but that was a stagger that knocked him out of a fall. Uh, so the thing that I just shot at him is called a thorn pod. Oh, thank you, bless RNG for being. Dang it. <laughs> uh, it's called a thorn pod. Um, it increases the amount of stun damage you do to a part, and since the hammer is all about stunning things, makes it really easy just to knock a monster out. Waiting for him to turn. Come on. There we go. There's the third one. So this actually, this big bang right here gets me low enough to capture him. But where is it? There it is. Alright, that's probably one of the best Juratotus I've had in a very long time. Uh, so we need this Might Seed right here. And we're gonna... Grappling hook over to this. And make a couple things. Cool. So, that actually went really smooth. Um, don't tell me what the timer's at, but to give you guys any indication, because I have my splits up, uh, if we're around a 58, we are on world record pace. I have no idea. I'm just, I'm, I'm building suspense if we are, and then I'm making myself look like a fool if we're not. <laughs> Gather round. Thanks to our research, it's heading. Um, Correct. I don't think I ever mentioned this. I, I, I think I, I started and then yes. forgot to, because so much goes on. Um, but there is kind of like a, a, a tier list for weapons in the any percent category. Pretty much any weapon that can stun a monster is OP, because stun is a natural status effect that a weapon can hold on all of its forms that is good. 
um, because it stops a monster's movement. Um, hammer, sword and shield, charge blade, and surprisingly bow uh, do stun damage all the best. Uh, buying more of those there because I need at least one more trap tool for this next split. Um, for this next hunt, I should say. Uh, which is Toby Kodachi. Um, tutorial re. Uh, but we have a really good, uh, what's it called? A really good script on Toby Kodachi. That'll 100 to 0 him in a couple of actions. Uh, well, 100 to 30 him in a couple of actions. Um, if I'm good... And if he cooperates, uh, we get it. If I'm bad, uh, or he doesn't cooperate, uh, it'll just be a little bit harder. Uh, so notice we didn't go to the canteen this time. We get, went to the camp uh, and ate. Uh, that's because after this hunt, there is a cutscene that's associated with that, and we don't want to watch that cutscene because cutscenes are slow. Uh, there's a cutscene at the canteen now, and we don't want to watch it. So we don't eat there anymore. Um, so now we're just kind of making our way to where Toby Kadachi is. Oh, come on. Thank you. We pick up that scatter nut. Uh, we land right here, and then we eat a demon drug. I'm going to hover this shock trap because up on this next ledge, not this one, not the next one, but the following one, um, we're going to put it down there. It's going to look weird, uh, but trust me, I've done this a couple times. And it's worked at least once. Put this right here. I pull out some bombs. Put down one, put down two, start that, and walk forward. So, I put down some bombs, I'm hovering on my item bar, small barrel bombs, and I put down a trap. If Toby Kadachi behaves, we'll see, and, I've, and if I'm good at the game, we'll see some, like, really cool, oh, a really cool script. This is a full script. This entire fight is scripted to go one way. Uh, we have all the tools we need to do it the right way. So I'm going to be quiet, uh, and we're going to do that. All right, so I messed it up. As long as he doesn't jump down, which he's going to. All right, I need to get him back over to a different ledge. Because I need to do what's called aerial spamming on him. I need to get him on a KO next to one. Okay. I'm just going to take this KO instead, and I got hit. All right, so remember that thing that I talked about? That would be really cool if we got, but we didn't. Uh, well, it's, we're, we, we can't get it now. So we're going to ad-lib the crap out of him. And man, I did this near perfectly on the practice run. We have another five dollar donation from Nova Kid. See, I put us over four hundred seahorses for Eva. Oh, that was very risky. I was gonna get hit. Good KO. So that's two KOs on him, uh, which is usually what I look for, because now that's first pod. Watch what he does here. Does nothing. And there's the second one. Okay. Oh, good. That actually knocked him over. I was really lucky. All right, not the best that could have gone, but actually a lot better considering uh, Toby Kodachi can just one-shot me at this point, uh, as can the next monster, Anjaneth. Um, a lot better uh, than I was anticipating messing up the beginning of that script. So, yay, we didn't die. Uh, Toby, yay. Yeah, Toby likes to... Uh, I think Toby is still going after like uh, a blood wish or something but um usually in marathons the last marathon that i did the, he, he he was out for blood he didn't get it luckily 
If he goes out for blood, he can either be just really angry or really nice. Well, we have another $5 donation from Quick saying put this for a 400 for first day. Pog 400 first day? We're doing it. Uh, so it's got to get a couple more materials uh, for the last hunt because we're going to use two or three traps on this one, depending on how well we do. Um, Anjanath's got a lot of RNG associated with him. I'm going to try to cut down a lot of that by by manipulating him and by controlling him in specific ways, uh, which requires me being good. You'll notice that the canteen has an awning now. It also has that cut uh, that cutscene, so we don't we don't sit down because there's this very long cutscene that's associated with it. Um, I think I forgot to mention I'm playing on PC uh, because I have virtually no load times. Um, timed out, they're on average two seconds versus console uh, on an SSD on like a PS4 Pro. Uh, it takes about uh, eight to twelve. So I make all these sleep knives because we're going to put uh, Anjan at the sleep and do what's called sleep bombing. Um, when a monster is asleep, the first source of damage that it takes is doubled. Um, sleep bombing is a, a technique that Monster Hunter users have used ever since sleep has been in the game, which is since the beginning, if I remember correctly. Um, so we're going to use that here. We're going to put the monster to sleep. Um, we're going to blow up some bombs, we're going to drop some rocks on them, and then if I'm good, I'll get a KO, I'll lure him into a trap, I'll get another KO, I'll mount him, and then that should be the first pod, and then after the mount, when he gets up, I'm going to try to flash pod him next to a ledge so I can ledge spam his head for the last pod, and maybe a KO, a third KO, and that'll be it. And it... it, it and I didn't mention this, but getting more than more than one KO, it increases the threshold to like to like you have to do so much damage to him. So let's say like you have to do 100 damage to the head to get the first stun. After that, it increases to like let's say 200 and then 400. Uh, so I'm gonna grab the scatter nut, shoot him to stop him from doing whatever he's doing. Put in these sleep knives and stand right here. We need to hit him with three of them. And stay underneath that. I'm gonna put this over here. It's away from everything. And I'm gonna really hope that this is close enough. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot that. And we're gonna shoot that. So he's really annoying because of the way his head moves. Um, but luckily, uh, the first stun doesn't really take that much. I think I just need two more hits. Yep, there it is. Uh, so that's really unfortunate. Uh, because we got, we can't, we essentially canceled the stun fall with a, uh, pitfall trap. But what I have effectively done is built up a, a mount. So I'm going to circumvent it with this mount, and then I'm going to try to get another KO off of it. Hit his hand. Don't miss. Uh. Come on, ledge. Thank you. All right, so now I'm just kind of playing this ledge. If I did enough damage, he'll go up, and he does not. Let's see if I can splash him out of this movement. I can, good. I don't want him to go anywhere else, really. So I flash him, oof, ow, uh, to get him to this state, which is just doing nothing. He doesn't know where I am. I'm actually gonna do this. Let's try something new. This has never before seen tech. Because he's going to fall out of that. Let's see if we can get another KO off of this. I don't know if I can hit him. Alright, so he still leaves. Um, if I could get... If I was able to get anything off on that... 
like either stun or something like that we probably could have captured him there um but now i don't have any more traps but we're we're actually really fine i'm just gonna wait for him i'm gonna take this it's just safe i've dropped one pod on the ground right there uh so this is what slow mounting looks like um, you stab faster on the back. Stabbing gets staggers. I'm trying to get two so I can drop him with a finisher. That's two, so we wait on the head now. The finisher doesn't always happen. Uh, but it does there. So we're looking for the last pod. Which I can't tell. Was that it? It was not. Okay, I got hit by that. Uh, I'm trying just to see. There it is. Just want to flash him right here. Perfect. Because he can get really far ahead of you and then just run away forever. Uh, so not the best Anjanath, uh, but when things don't go right, I mean, it'll do. Um, so now we really don't have to gather or do anything. Uh, because all we got left is Zora Magdaros. Or as I like to call him, uh, Zora Napdaros. Um, because it's an auto-scroller. And we're just gonna sleep during it. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna take this time and say that we got another $12.26 from Spar. Yo! With the comment of Weed Sex, putting <laughs> us at a total of $420.00 and 69 cents <laughs> nice good job good job spar um so this is the last couple of things that we need to do i mean the last couple of things we have one thing left to do and it's repel zora magdaros uh where we should where try to capture him actually um little does the commander here know is that you can't capture an elder dragon zora madras is an elder dragon come on man just it's simple it's simple monster hunter logic come on now um but this quest is really interesting um it's regulated by a damage gate uh to complete the quest you have to deal a certain amount of damage it's actually not a lot um there are cannons and ballista on the sides of the uh, uh on on the quest uh we're going to use those to damage him um at very specific times to get staggers to stagger him out of attacks to make his movement faster um we call this zora skip uh zora skip is easy to do and even easier to mess up uh because zora is so boring you just kind of zone out and then it's like oh wait what animation was that and then either you do it too soon or you do it too late it puts them in a different spot and then you waste a bunch of time well i'm gonna pay attention or at least try to um but we'll end up shooting uh one full cannon at him to stagger him once five ballista at him to build up a, a damage another stagger and then shoot another ballista uh new, shoot another cannon another five cannons at him to get a second stagger then we're going to move back to the Ballista and shoot it once um, to get a third stagger. Uh, we're going to do the first two staggers at very specific points to cancel attack animations. Uh, that progresses his movement. The last one can happen at literally any point, and then he starts to move towards the barrier. Um, him moving towards the barrier is what we call Zora Skip. Just getting that is, is Zora Skip uh, because we're trying to do it as fast as possible. Um, it saves, like... When the time comes, oh boy from doing this casually probably somewhere close to eight minutes um if you do absolutely nothing zora will progress but you'll have to deal damage to him at some point the amount of damage that you have to deal i believe is equal to eight cannon or excuse me ten cannon shots and like three ballista uh that's the damage gate we'll do more than that obviously just to make sure um but uh we're gonna do i don't know just kind of some very specific movement here in the beginning get up shoot what's called the ballista binder um the early ballista actually saves us time from letting the npcs do it automatically um and it also is the binder lasts 
let binder is shorter so it actually ends quicker it's just another trigger for the uh, the quest to, to proceed um this is like really the only real movement until the very end where we repel uh a super secret pet uh the spikiest of hedgehogs nur gigante um and we have a quick kill on him uh, that just trivializes the the monster, uh, which uses uh, two large barrels, two two barrel bombs, and three small barrel bombs. Uh, those combined are enough to uh, to make him run away. Uh, so we just throw those down, and we don't even fight him. Uh, and then there's just like a random lull after you get that damage gate uh, of anywhere between two seconds uh and uh like eight or nine seconds for the quest to end so you just sit there and you wait but it feels like an eternity so i grab that one shot binder uh i shoot it just above his head uh and it hits him right now uh so this whole sequence would happen later automatically um when either the npc npcs told me to or when they got impatient enough and just did it themselves um, we eat here really just for stamina. I can do the chef's choice here. It gives me more health. It gives me more stamina because um, you can die here. Uh, and then just in case I take that max potion. It's always a just in case thing. There's really nothing else here to do. Zora can technically kill you. You can die to stupid things like these guys. They're annoying. They like to hit you. Uh, we just kill those wing drakes so they don't bother us for this first little little cycle of Zora. Uh, both these cannons will push once to the left and wait. I'm waiting for a specific animation. Uh, I mean, it's the same one every single time. I'm just, it's just my my visual key on when to shoot. Uh, but he'll take a, a step and he'll kind of slide uh, to to the left this way. Um, that long slide slide is my, you know, uh, essentially trigger what I'm looking out for uh, to shoot the cannon. Immediately after that, he starts to like rear back to do a to do a hand slam. So shooting that cannon uh, will hit him four times. That will give him a stagger. Uh, sometimes the fifth one hits. Sometimes it doesn't. We actually don't really need it to. So it's the next step here. He's gonna kind of turn himself a little bit, and then a big step, and then he kind of has this like weird slide, like that. So when that slide starts, that's when I shoot it. You can shoot it a little bit earlier. Uh, that gets us a break. Uh, and four of those hit. Then we shoot five into the chest right here where they do 40 damage. The weak spot. We just shoot five. We're just building up the next stagger because on the next cannon, um, the first one will stagger him. Then the next four that hit will build up the next stagger. Um, so we just push this here. I put on this ghillie mantle. It makes me essentially hidden from the monsters. You saw me put it on earlier. It's uh, just a, a utility that they put in the game. Um, there's a bunch of these different mantles. They have different effects. Um, but it essentially hides me from the monsters, so these wing drakes here don't hit me while I'm waiting for well, him to move in a w very specific way again. I'm just looking for this kind of, like, trigger where his head stops. And you can see, like, the animations change, which is going to be... All right, Bless RNG just tripped him, uh, and that wastes time. So, thanks, Cat. Uh, but I'm waiting for him to still take that step forward. If he's gonna do it. Come on. But, so the cat can do that. And there it is. You saw it kind of, he just kind of like stopped for a second. Um, that's just really annoying. Now the cat can get a stagger like that and it's just real obnoxious. I'm just gonna wait for this animation to end. Right there. And my one shot. I'm actually too suspicious, so I'm gonna shoot it a couple more times. There's nothing else really to do here. I'm just I'm just doing that just out of safety. I I'm not I'm not brave enough. Um, there's really nothing else to do at this point. Um, this is kind of like this is the last quest to do for this category. Um, so we really don't have to do anything. I usually go into the tent here and do an inventory management because it's what I would do for. Uh, colossal task to give you some insight on that you saw that tutorial pop up that's a time loser anywhere else uh, so I do it here when we have to wait anyways and we just manage our inventory 
um, because by the end of Colossal Task, we want uh, 36,000 Zenny to buy an item called the uh, Power Charm. It's a flat stat boost. Um, this is just a little insight to the other the other later categories. Um, but it's a flat stat boost. It's it's a, essentially your, your level up. Um, but that, that dialogue right there is essentially what I wait for to make sure that I know I did Zora skip correctly. It'll happen about, like, halfway through this, and so kind of lollygagged, or lollygagged around. Um, it happens, you know, essentially a little bit earlier, but it's the same time. Yeah, so we got another $20 donation. 20, Pog. People's Jabroni. Yo. Saying, this doesn't look like a hunting horn run. No, it wasn't a hunting horn run. I'm sorry, Jabroni. I'm not that brave. Um, I'm never that brave. Hunting horn's not a fun run. Uh, so there's like a little bit of RNG that's associated with the Anjanath run. Uh, we want two pelts going into Colossal Task. We got two pelts in this one, so this would be like a good one to have had that RNG for. Um, doesn't really matter for history books. Just want to give you guys a little insight to the uh, to the full run. Because this, this game's actually... It's it's a lot of skill and a lot of attention, like paying attention to like the things that you gather, how much uh, you have, your resources, everything like that. It's very easy to go into a quest and then not have the things you need to trap. And you're just like, well, I lose so much time. Because I didn't ever explain that, did I? Um, capturing, you can essentially end the quest when the monster's health is at 30. So you save the time hunting the monster from 30% to 0%. So... You essentially end end the monster, you end the quest sooner. Not only that, on Jogris we had a 60 second quest timer because we slayed him. It gives us time to carve the monster if we wanted to. Um, whereas when you capture, you can't carve the monster, so they actually put in a, a shorter uh, end quest timer. It's only 20 seconds. So, out of, uh, uh, during the course of the run, um, we save 40 seconds for every monster that we can capture. Um... I calculated it out for the full run. I think there was like 16 monsters that you can capture out of the full run. Uh, so whatever 16 times 40 divided by 60, all that stuff. Uh, it saves like uh, eight minutes, eight to 12 minutes or something like that. I can't remember the math exactly, but we did it in the discord the other day. Uh, which, hey, speaking of, if you're interested in running this game, um, it's actually, I, I think the, the any percent is really easy to get into. Because unlike individual levels where, like, you know, you go and fight a high-ranked Nergigante and, you know, the quest timer is, is your speedrun, um, you don't need, like, all of the endgame grinding and all of the endgame tools uh, to do this. You can do it from right in the beginning. Um, so if you enjoy playing this game and you want to play it at, like, a higher skill level, this is a really good challenge. Um, there, there's definitely something to be said about playing the game with minimal resources uh, as fast as you possibly can uh, versus like playing the game with all of your resources to do a quest as fast as possible um we we do you know have have leaderboards for individual levels is what we call them the the individual quests themselves like going and doing uh the nergigante the high rank nergigante quest um you can speedrun that or you can do RTA, which is the any percent stuff. Both are really easy to get into, in my opinion. Uh, so if you already like play the game and you have a lot of time in it, we do have a Discord, which you can get to on the uh, speedrun.com. Just search for the Monster Hunter series and it's right there. And hey, I'm a mod there. I'm an admin there too. I'm a series mod and a game mod. Um, so if you have any questions, you can always come to me. Um, I like helping new people get into this game. We've had actually a lot of, you know, recent uh, interest now with Iceborne out on console and soon to come out on PC. Um, the game changes a lot. We get a lot more tools. Uh, they make the game actually easier in the first half of it. Uh, so doing the any percent speed run actually gets a lot faster in Iceborne. Um, so if you don't like what a five and a half hour run sounds like, maybe you like what a five hour run sounds like. So yeah, there's always that. But any and all interest, definitely head over to the Discord, to our Discord, or to the speedrun.com site. Um, and people still run the other games too. If you okay. have a Switch, Generations U, that's a really fun game. It's very anime. 
um, or on 3DS. People still run for you and uh, Generations on the 3DS. And I'm trying to get a capture card at 3DS so I can do uh, Monster Hunter Stories, which is essentially the Monster Hunter RPG. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so if you have a 3DS and you want to spend like 20 bucks on a fun game, Monster Hunter Stories. Recommend checking it out. Um, but there is about like four minutes uh, left in this in this run. Uh, we got to get to that barrier. Um, all of this that I'm doing, this running around, completely unnecessary to this. Don't need to be doing it. I just mine here because it's what we do for colossal tasks because we need those materials for other things. Uh, don't even need to do it for history books because this the speed run's about to end. Literally nothing else to uh, to to use here. So. Uh, okay. I have no idea what else to talk about. So if you have anything to talk about, uh, Matt, <laughs> I'd say go for it, because you got about four minutes. Oh no, he's not there. <laughs> but this is usually what I do. I sit here and I, uh, I open up chat and I just look at this, but I don't have chat open this time because I'm unprepared. We just gotta get to that barrier. Um, Fall off of Zora Maduros. I know it sounds counterproductive. We're going to fall off of him to reset our position on his back. Uh, place bombs down at a very specific location. Get one last dodge roar. Put down three bombs. Uh, and then that'll be the game. Uh, so time is coming up soon. I would get ready with that. Please and thank you. Uh, because it yep. will be coming up soon. I mean, like four minutes, but... Well, three minutes now. Just let me know when, like, 15 seconds ahead. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you see the big, spiky, angry thing, just get ready. Okay. <laughs> it's very obvious who he is. We have many a nickname for him. Angry. Uh, the angriest hedgehog. Nurgle. Ned. <laughs> but... I don't know. If, if this game looks interesting to you, Monster Hunter World is definitely the easiest one to get into. Monster Hunter games are a lot of fun. If you like Dark Souls, you'll like this. Um, especially if you like yelling at Dark Souls about how BS it is and like, oh, I can't believe that killed me and stuff like that. Yeah, this game will do that too. Um, just get to Nergigante, which is pretty much the end of the base game, and then scream at it because he dive bombs you and explodes into a gigantic storm of thorns. All right, Zora is about to stand up. Um... So I'll put my ghillie mantle on before I fall off of him. The ghillie mantle will stop Nergigante from aggroing me. Uh, it'll keep me like it does hidden. Uh, I just got to make sure I don't fall here. Falling here really sucks because finding out your positioning on the back is really hard because it all looks the same. Um, I'm going to walk right over here and wait. Covering the large barrel bombs. What's really funny is that if you don't meet that like that damage gate that I was talking about, Nergigante or er, Zora Madras never stands up. So we fall off and land on his back, on the back of his neck. That resets us here, and then I put these down right in front of this rock that kind of looks like a poop, and then hover the barrel bombs. Um, now it resets our position again on the on the back of Zora. And there he is, Nergigante himself. Such a cool monster. He lands right on top of those. Other frame perfect dodge. One, two, three. Get ready on time. All right, get that hit him. Get that dodge again. Uh, it's coming up and... Time. Um, One that's thirty eighteen. 18. 130.18. Man, that was close. A 129 would have been great. I, I was shooting for a 129, but a 130 I'll take all day long. I'm probably going to go back and retime a lot of this stuff and see where I lost time at. Because I know Toby Kodachi could have done better. Anjanath could have done better. But I, I really had a feeling we'd had a really good Baroth. And a really good Jeratotus. So I'll go back and I'll look at some of that. But yeah. So that's Monster Hunter World History Books. Um, that's only the first third of the game hour and a half long run um and it's getting quicker because with yesterday's update to the game we get things called defender gear uh which is a dlc category for the game now or prop most likely we're still actually doing some testing on it 
Uh, and it saves a lot of time because it's essentially rare six items at the very beginning of the game, which are end game items at the very beginning of the game. So makes the game really trivial and a lot easier to run. So if you want to get into it, that's probably the way to do it. Um, but no that's the speed run. I've been Jow Bagel. And there he is, the unit himself. See, they couldn't contain him. As much as they tried. One thirty eighteen, huh? Better than the last one I did. The absolute unit himself. Zora Magnimos. Um, but yeah, that's it from me. If you like what you saw, I'm on Twitch. Uh, Jow Bagel, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to sit here and look pretty. I'll do my best. That's why I hope it is with him, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 the camera, man. Yeah, the camera. Oh, the camera. There you go. That's easy. That works. Yeah, yeah, boom. I think you can get me from here, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> no! Here, no! Are How are you still not in the shot? <laughs> I'm just not in the shot, Come man. On, <laughs> so. Fuck, I'm still out of the shot, man. <laughs> just put it down. <laughs> just put... Oh, cool. Look, man, now we're out of the shot. There we go. <laughs> How are you guys all doing? Let me scrunch down in the corner here. All right. <laughs> this has been day one. Dog Pound Expo 2019. Brought to you by me and all these specs over here. <laughs> Oh man, it's been a long day. It's yeah. been a long, crazy day. It's been yeah. a long, silver fox day. Yeah, you know what? Twelve hours. See you guys.
Well, it's been longer than 12 hours. Of streaming. Well, yeah, 12 hours of streaming. But uh, we, what is our final donation total of tonight? Four forty sixty nine money weed money sex. <laughs> First one was weed <laughs> weed money. No but, weed sex. God damn it. Come on, Meta. <laughs> Get it together, bro. We look like a bunch of wise men. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so PJ, what do you have to say about the event today? It was a long day, but it was good. Everyone, everyone, everything seemed to go smoothly. All the transitions, everything, you know, we had a couple audio issues, but everyone was actually nice enough to tell us so we could fix it as opposed to coming in, just leaving. Um, you know, everyone, we had the run set up. We were ahead of schedule for the most part. Um, you know, I had a couple of hiccups here and still were able to stay on schedule. So, I mean, the whole thing, everyone seemed to have a good, a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Proto. Proto's all about you, yeah. man. Well, you know what? He could have uh, been here, but... Yeah, Proto being That's here. on him. I don't want to hear it, you know. 500 Oh, God! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Look what you've done! <laughs> he broke... He we had it all figured out, man. You got it all jank on the freaking computer, jank bro. Jank as fuck, man. Look. Now I'm not in the corner anymore. Good God, bro. No, that's the wrong way, guy. All right, We're all back. Whatever. <laughs> what? Yeah, he's still, face. There we go. You're good. Oh my god. Girl's crying. It's fine. <laughs> we, we lost him, man. All right. So it's been. Oh it's been. God. This is. This is what happens after a 12-hour day. It's fine. Oh, I've been laughing so hard. I, my sides hurt. <laughs> yeah, we're closing off day one. There we we go. got day two starting tomorrow, 9 a.m. Be there. Or be something that's not good. Pretty much, pretty much. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for everyone that was here. Thank you for the donations. I mean, this blew away what we thought it You could have been doing be. anything with your money, that, but you chose <laughs> to give it to this charity, and we will always appreciate that. That is true. That is very true. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. It says a lot about the community. It does. It does. I An think outpouring we, uh, of support. We doubled what our day one goal was going to be. Yes. So thank you to double. everyone that donated. Like your money's gonna go help a lot of people with an awesome charity. Uh, like we said, four hundred sixty dollars and sixty nine cent, or is that four forty? I can't read. Four forty. Four forty. Tilify's been having some issues. I think you have to do it by card, right? Yeah, that, that's what I've been experiencing. That's what we're doing. Apparently, we're trying. We're tra we'll check out what's going on but that's been like that all day unfortunately yeah. we can't that's 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 on them not really on us yeah yeah hopefully that will be more squared away tomorrow hopefully yeah, yeah. because that's not an issue with the donation right. through us it's an issue with the donation yeah, so tomorrow the, the system so hopefully is that one two three yes it is. One, two, three, you're yeah. supposed to be racing me i gotta run little mermaid alone now yeah oh, man. thanks i gotta i gotta do it first thing tomorrow because of you Freaking so yampy <laughs> yeah, he wants to go by Yampy now. What? Oh, did yeah. you not know? Yeah. Yeah, he want one, two, three. You he got, wants to change his name got, to Yampy. It's or, Lord flows, Yampy. What? I like Lord Yampy. Yeah. Yampy? Lord, Lord, can we get some votes in the chat? Can, we make, a, can we make this a donation poll incentive? <laughs> sounds like a like a British STD. Yampy or Lord Yampy. <laughs> we'll have a Yo, poll out I, I there. Got, I got the Yampy. And whichever <laughs> one is leading at the end of the at the end of the event, <laughs> that's what you name yourself. Oh my God, a British STD. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's all good. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to help him. I'm trying to help. It's fine. Uh, Yampy has taken the spell of the Lord oh, Yampy. <laughs> well, you, uh, you can go with Yampy Jr. Zero over there. Yampy Jr. or Lord Yampy. There you go. <laughs> Yampy is Dark Lord of All. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, so Matt, what do you got to say? <laughs> It's been a very successful day one. Yeah, it blew everyone's expectations. It did. Yeah. 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 Nothing didn't break badly. <laughs> yeah. It that's just true. blew PGA. <laughs> that's why he was passed out on the couch over there. That's right. I gave you guys the hot content you wanted. You're welcome. I don't want to hear anything else about it. Like, it's for you. <laughs> I could have been doing anything with my time, but I chose to spend it right there on that freaking food. <laughs> All right, so you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thanks for being friends. Right, See you guys. tomorrow. Thank 9 a.m. So Bye. Have a good day. Y'all have a good night. <laughs>